Hello, this is Aaron Dominion, and welcome to the Creation Kit scripting series. It hasn't been done in a while, uh, the papyrus tutorials that I've been doing, but I'm trying to get back into the swing of it. So, the last episode that we left off at uh, was talking about arrays. Now let's look at arrays and recursive functions. Now this is the 17th part of the events and functions unit that I started on, so let's go into it. So function recursion, it's a function that calls itself repeatedly until some sort of condition is met. We've, in the past, talked about Fibonacci, factorial. There's a few other functions we've gone through, but I would look at the old episodes in order to look at those examples. We are going to look at one of them, though, just to touch on how it can relate to arrays. So how does this change with arrays? All well, the basic mechanics recursion hold no matter what uh, if you're using arrays or not using arrays. The only difference here is that an array is involved in some shape or manner in the recursive call. <laughs> so that being said, let's look at an example. Uh, factorial as an array. So here we've defined an array called fact. That array is going to store all the factorial uh, calls that we've made. And now uh, in this uh, function, we go through, we have a number that we input, probably going to be zero, and then our desired one, which is going to be like the fact of four, fact of five, so on and so forth. So we go through the basic conditions. If it meets those conditions, it's going to assign the number to the factorial at number, since number is being used as the index for <laughs> the array. Um, in the first if L, uh, before, in the chain of ifs, in the first one we have uh, number times the factorial of previous index. That's because of how we're storing it. Like, the fact of zero is going to be stored, the fact of one is going to be st stored, um, once we get to the fact of 2, it's going to equal 2 times the fact of 1, so on and so forth. It cuts on uh, your time immensely if you do it that way, because you're storing the previous result. You're only doing one multiplication per call instead of chaining multiplications. You still have the same number in the end, but it helps on speed. So this is uh, how factorial would be written in this. Uh, take some time to maybe pause the video and look at it. Um, but let's go to an actual test environment. So if I go over to the creation kit, we have uh, our arrays function cell. I've created a new function. And I've defined an array of housekeepers. <laughs> if you remember housekeepers from a few episodes back, we're going to use them for this episode. So, each of these references, uh, if we can expand them, uh, looks like I accidentally assigned the same one twice. So, let's go through fix that. So, each of these references in the function we're about to design, basically, after a certain amount of time, the player's going to have elf skeevers spawn. One to the left, one to the right, one behind. Something like that. It might not be exact positioning like that, but we'll find out in a moment. So... In a moment, we're going to start uh, doing the uh, coding portion. Okay, so I have opened up the uh, script we want to do, and I've already done a little bit of work on it. I've set up our event on the net whenever this is initialized, and then our update game time function, but or event, excuse me. But I haven't done work on the function yet, so... Let's do the function. So function, uh, there's going to be no return value on this because all we're doing is repeatedly calling the function in order to spawn this 
skeevers, but in different spots. So, we are going to do uh, skeever spawn with arrays. And what we're going to pass into this is int uh, initial or excuse me, index, and then we want to do max value, and then what we want, no, we don't want anything else, we just want those things. So, now we go through on the function, and we want to do a check to Actually, we don't want to do the check quite yet. The one that I was thinking of. So, check index. If index is equal to zero, remember arrays are zero indexed, so we have to start with zero in order to get the first element. So, if index is equal to zero, we want to do an HEPR L skeever array at index dot move to uh, we should have probably defined something for the player, but that's okay. We'll just do a game dot get player <laughs> for the player and Let's say this one's going to be the skeever that spawns behind. So, you're then going to say 0.0, .0 because that's the x uh, offset. And now let's do a negative 512 for the distance from the player. And then zero for the Z, so it might spawn in the ground, I don't think so, most of the time, whenever you do that. And that's going to be in that case. So let's do an else if. Index equals one. Skeever is going to spawn to the right. So, again, we need to call the array. In practice, it's probably better just to copy-paste this to save on time, but let's not do that just for the sake of... So this is the part... Since, if you think of your player as the position zero, 0, if you drew up an XY graph. The reason why we went negative Y is because that should be behind the player. And positive Y should be in front. Or it could be X. I'm, I don't remember at this moment for that. Um, but for X, if we're thinking of it in terms of the graph, positive X should be to the right, negative X should to the left. So here since we want to do the right, we do 512.0, 0, 0.0, because we don't want a y offset and we don't want a z offset. When we set the rotation to false, it'll maintain whatever rotation. And then we're going to just do a simple else here because we're at the last index. And this is going to be the skeever is going to spawn to the left. And we're going to just do the same thing that we were doing a moment ago. Access the skeever at the index. We're going to get the player. And this time we want to do a negative 512x.
And that's going to be your first of. Now we want to do uh, check to see if index is max value. Otherwise, repeat. So if index is less than max value, then we want to call the skeever spawn with arrays. We want to do index plus one and then max value. And then we end the if, and this should work. Let's check our creation kit. I'm going to go through here, save, and it compiled successfully. So we are now going to save the changes that we made here, and I will see you in a moment for the testing in the game. One thing I forgot whenever we went through and saved this, notice I did not call the function here. So instead of going through Notepad++, we're just going to do a simple edit here. So we're going to have the starting index at zero always, and we want to use two here because zero, one, two, that's all three skeevers right there. So, after that, we want to save, and we should uh, see them in the game. Alright, here we are loading the game, and we should see uh, those skeevers try to attack us pretty soon. And all three of them spawned here. One of them trapped in a building, it looks like. And it looks like we've defeated all three of them. So, as you can see, it was able to call itself repeatedly until it got to the condition that we said, hey, stop. It didn't keep going, we didn't have any errors pop up. So you can use this if you needed to do something and you weren't looping through them. Uh, but now I'm going to step back to the slides and we're going to get to the end of the episode. And that's it for this episode. Um, I am a Skyrim modder. I've been really busy, so I haven't done that much in terms of mod releasing. I've only been tinkering here and there or answering questions from people that have messaged me. Uh, feel free to contact me if you have questions about the content of this episode, previous episodes, or scripting questions in general uh, here, and will be in the description of this video as well is my Nexus form profile. And then uh, the Nexus profile if you don't want the form profile. You can also message me on YouTube. I will respond to that. And I will see everybody on the next episode.